Hello, Gemini. Thank you for joining me for your weekly forecast for the Sun or the Ascendant for week commencing the 10th of September. This is an absolutely action-packed week. But before we pick through the astral bones of it, I'd just like to remind you about two events which occurred last week. In fact, both of them occurred on the last day of last week, and they're really important. The first was the new moon in the sign of Virgo, your sister Mutable sign. Mutable is all about being open to flexing, to not being too fixed in our positions, and that's a great talent that you have. And the area that you're being asked to be perhaps a little bit more open around is your own emotional well-being and how you think and deal with different uh, things that are occurring around you, perhaps to do with your environment, your family, your own deeper inner being, and also in a more physical sense where you live. But the thing with that new moon was that it was angling towards Pluto and Jupiter. And the sun continues that journey this week. This gives you the possibility of making some fundamental changes. So some Geminis, I think, could be actively seeking to change where they live. Now that could come from actually moving altogether. It could come from evolving in the space you're already in. Or it could be a very deep journey that's going to go on inside of you. Because our home essentially is deep within our emotions. The physical place that we take our being to exist is the more practical uh, manifestation of that. But our home really lies deep within ourselves. And something profound can happen in that regard this week. It could be about how you think, your relationship to life or people around you. It could be your emotional health, but something can be transformed in a very positive way. But on Monday, the Sun is in an opposition to Neptune, and that could create some kind of input that comes to you from someone older or younger who may not share the zest that you have for what you're doing, or just may not get it. They may seem really spun out, or a bit woolly, or actually a bit disparaging about what you're trying to do, but keep the faith. In fact, your ruler, Mercury, is going to be challenged much more later in the week by Neptune. And once more, some discouraging noises could come in. Try to push this back. If you can focus on what you can do this week, your thinking can be utterly inspired. It is true to say that Venus moved at the end of last week too, and is in an opposition with Uranus for the whole of this week. And with Mars returning to your sister air sign of Aquarius midweek, that's going to T-square this influence. It's complex. It's possible that something can come into the open in perhaps an unexpected way that could be a bit uncomfortable. But because you're an air sign, the Sun, uh, pardon me, Mars moving back into Aquarius is going to give you a thirst for the truth. Now, everyone's truth is different, we know that. Even if people witness the same event, their recounting of the story can be very, very different. But I think Mars is going to give you a thirst to get to your truth, and that can help you to counter, again, any energy that's coming in unexpectedly from others. Perhaps people are going to challenge you about your perceptions, your way of doing things. There could be some... Uh, testing energy from this but equally it's an opportunity for you to just tune deeper into yourself and really dive into the vat of, vat of your true potential which can be absolutely enormous there is a quarter moon as this week draws to a close it's true in your opposite side suggesting a relationship matter could be a bit tender but generally that angle between the sun jupiter and pluto is at the heart of of what this week is about. Also, Mercury tunes into this in the last couple of days. So change is possible, but it doesn't have to manifest itself in a physical sense. It can be within you. It can be around where you live, who you live with, and how you live there. It may be about redecoration. It may be about 
altering your property around. It may be about a decluttering, but it's going to be transforming in some way. I think this is really a potentially very profound week. And it's important to stay with how you feel about things, however others feel around you. It's been a real pleasure being with you. I'd love it if you would like or comment on this video, or if you've yet to do so, please do subscribe to this channel. But for now, thank you so much for spending time with me. Goodbye. Hello, Gemini. Thank you for joining me for your September monthly forecast. This is for the sun or the ascendant. I am sorry that I'm doing this a little bit later than, than I would like. But here goes. This month begins with quite a big focus, to be honest, on the part of your situation which is to do with your emotional bearings, your foundations. It's not just in terms of home. It can be where you feel most comfortable in your life in general. The atmosphere of situations is going to take on a much greater importance for you. Obviously, your great gift is your mind and the ability to communicate with lots of different people in lots of different ways, very bright and articulatedly. But Mercury, your ruler, does come out of shadow early this month because it had been going uh, backwards, as you know, since the 26th of July in the sign of Leo, which is all about your everyday thinking, your everyday uh, thoughts. But because of that retrograde, although it's come to a close, it's coming back to the point at the start of this month where it emerges through the point where the retrograde began. So if there is something around a communicational issue which has seemed a little bit bogged down and not flowing quite as well as you would like, some early progress is possible uh, from the 6th. There's also a quarter moon on that day as well in your sign. The suggestion here is that you may find yourself in the following week having to balance those more emotional and foundational issues that I spoke of with what feels comfortable for you as an individual. Someone around you may be a little bit out of sorts. This could be a family member. If you share accommodation with someone else, you may be more conscious of your need for room or the impact that other people have on your space. But by the 9th, well, Mercury then moves into the sign of Virgo, one of its two home zones along with yours. Mercury in Virgo is very much to do with the detail of things, and it's to do with thinking in a very dry way, which gives some kind of tangible result from whatever it is we're focusing upon. And I think the chances are, Something could be altering around the base of your existence, so that could be your home. But it could see you, as Mercury moves on the night, have a really important conversation with someone about something from the past. Uh, you could be recollecting, there could be a reunion, but because there is a grand earth trine with Saturn and also Uranus, which will last for a few days, this can be a springboard to better understand your needs when it comes to your immediate environment, wherever you find yourself. But of course, on the night, there is also a new moon. And this new moon gives you the opportunity to perhaps redecorate, move your uh, furnishings around, declutter, perhaps think about starting a business from home, because this new moon forges a beautiful link with Jupiter. Uh, and also feeds into the location of Pluto. So these two links for you are very much about making the most of your assets. Whatever they may be, you can squeeze a bit more from them. And imagination can be part of this too, because Neptune's on the other side of the heavens as well, remember. And that's having a big impact on how you're thinking about your more worldly uh, activities. But Uranus and Saturn are going to be feeding into this as well. So it's a chance to be enterprising, to think about your resources, perhaps a bit more reflectively, uh, but you can do so in a positive way. Now from the 11th through to the end of the month, well, Mars is going to be clashing with Uranus again. Mars moves back into the sign of Aquarius. Now for you, this is a great location insofar as it gives you a desire of adventurism, of independence, 
But with Uranus locked away through till November in a very tender part of your horoscope, I think what can happen from the 11th through to the end of the month is an issue that you might ordinarily turn the other cheek to can take on an almost furnace-like intensity and could get under your skin a little bit. You could discover something that you didn't know before on a point of principle or even a, a basic fact, which also could be very surprising. At the heart of this month, Venus and Mars are also going to be in a tete-a-tete. Now, Venus, for you, initially, is in a gorgeous location because it's in the part of your horoscope that's to do with playfulness and to do with love and romance. But then it gets much more practical for the rest of the month. But it's not the end of the opportunity to be more outgoing because both the Sun and your ruler Mercury are going to be moving into the sign of Libra for the last 10 days. And this gives you a, a, a wonderful opportunity to rejuvenate your enthusiasm over anything that you feel passionate about. And it can see you wanting to be more playful, go out and about, mix and mingle much more and demonstrate your classic Gemini qualities. There is also a full moon, and this full moon occurs in the sign of Aries. So there may be some balance to be found between the passions you want to pursue as an individual and what you need to do in terms of the collective response to your life. In other words, your responsibility to friends. And also thinking about your longer term future. So I think there is going to be times this month when you could feel a little quieter, a little more reflective, but there's a lot to learn from this. And you can emerge from this and feel more outgoing, more spontaneous, more entertaining. And if, in a romantic context, you are thinking about things carefully on the back of Venus's square with Mars, and also in terms of uh, the more introverted energies of Mercury being in the fourth house, which can see us bottling up our feelings a little bit, I have to be honest. But once it emerges, you're going to be that much more outgoing. Now, the other thing to mention is that Jupiter and Pluto do retain a fantastic link all month. Jupiter is, of course, traditionally about good fortune. Pluto is about change. Pluto can be about ruthless change, where we are so mindful of getting what we want from situations that we sweep opposition apart, or it can see other people inflict that kind of energy upon us. Sometimes also Pluto will root out of our lives things that we're not even conscious that we don't really need anymore. And that can be very disconcerting too. But in this combination, I think there's every chance that if you're working hard at something you feel passionate about and that you enjoy, there could be something that falls into place very well for you around earnings or a job this month. I do hope so. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for all the wonderfully kind comments and feedback and suggestions about dealing with my rheumatoid arthritis. I sincerely appreciate it. I'd love it if you would like or comment on this video, or if you've yet to do so, please do subscribe to my channel. But for now, good luck and goodbye. Hello, thank you so much for watching my video. I'd love you to join me at my Horoscope Ace app. You can find this at www.horoscope-ace.com. You can use it through Android, iOS, Apple or Facebook. Check out your Ascendant or your Moon site or download your free birth chart. There's all your favourite videos, plus there are daily, weekly, monthly and yearly horoscopes for general, love, Chinese and Indian astrology. If your passion is tarot, there's my brilliant three-card Money or Love Tarot readings too. And it's all there at www.horoscope-ace.com. Thank you.